Welcome back to another video. Hope you are having a great day. And today with a mini computer that has the Intel i3 N300 8-core CPU, 16 gigabytes of RAM and 512 gigs of storage. Now, if you are asking yourself if this kind of machine with this exact CPU is capable of productivity, besides that some gaming or even video editing and besides that not having a fan being 100% completely silent is it capable to handle the tasks without thermal throttle those were exactly my questions as well so if you want to find out let's go straight for it and if you are watching this video on your windows 10 or 11 computer and you still haven't activated and can't even edit your desktop icons don't forget to check out cdksales.com where we can find budget official oem keys at an affordable price and with the coupon code that you can see on screen and down below on the video description it will get even cheaper and besides windows 11 pro if you are looking for windows 10 or even an office suit that we can aggregate directly to our microsoft account you can use the same coupon code which will give you the best price possible at this moment so just in case the link will be down below So inside the package, the quick user guide, which I believe that you won't need, but of course, if you have about two minutes, you can read it. There's a monitor mount. So if we want to mount the mini computer on the back of a monitor, we can do so with this plate, which also comes with the screws that are necessary, a HDMI cable to HDMI, and then two uh, antennas with SMA connection for the back right over here which we are going to connect in just a few moments and then the power adapter and also a cable management strip which might be useful to tie some cables now i already removed the bottom cover right over here so that we can take a sneak peek and check what's inside actually we can also see this block right over here but let's leave this for uh, just a couple of minutes so right over here on the on this side I'm not really sure if it's left or right but on the inside right over here two hdmi ports 2.0 up to 4k at 60 hertz 2.5 gig ethernet connection two usb 2.0 ports and a dc in then at the front which i suppose is at the front there's only a reset switch and then on this side a micro sd card slot usb type c 3.2 generation 2 and two usb type a 3.2 generation 2 which means that 10 gigabits right over here in terms of bandwidth, a audio combo jack, and then the power button. Basically, this is it regarding the connectivity. Now, this is a massive block. It is a fanless design, so it cools down like we have seen on the previous generation of the Minix Z100. This is the Z3 and it looks and feels really really awesome so 100 silent now if we take a look here we can see something else which is cool you can see this uh, thermal paste right over here and then this block which helped to dissipate the heat on this side and help to dissipate the heat on this side right over here so it will dissipate on both sides and then in terms of upgrades besides being able to upgrade the antennas if we need more power we can also upgrade the ddr4 ram dim that it's right over here it only has one slot so if we want to upgrade to 32 gigs we will need to remove this 16 gigs and place in a 32 gigs and here it comes with a 512 gig ssd but we can put a four terabyte ssd inside if we want to upgrade later on which i believe that 512 will be plenty for most use cases and basically this is it in terms of upgradability and in terms of the connectivity taking a look at some numbers i did start with the ethernet which is a 2.5 gig ethernet port so we were getting roughly 1800 megabits per second downloads and 2500 megabits per second upload so maxing out on the upload but on the download not reaching as good but there are many causes not to reach the maximum so it's all fine we could test out the maximum in terms of wi-fi i was getting 300 megabits per second download 300 megabits per second on upload so at this moment this was the maximum that i could reach i was expecting a little bit more but eh, not bad at all geekbench 1126 on single core score and 3051 on multi-core score so this would not be the first machine that i would suggest to edit videos for example or to play demanding games but 
uh, Geekbench does not tell us the whole story, so we will talk about it in just a few moments. But the disk speed test, on the other hand, did surprise me really, really well. It was able to reach about 2000 megabytes per second reads and on writes. Actually, it was between 2000 and 2500, which are great speeds so that we can transfer files really quickly. And if we want to edit some videos, then the SSD will not be the bottleneck. One of my curiosities was, okay, the CPU is capable of a few things, but is it capable to run at maximum without thermal throttle? So I did test out the eight cores being 100% full throttle at full capacity stress test. And the maximum temperature that I was able to see was 70 degrees Celsius. So really far away from the 100, 105 limit of this CPU, while the ambient temperature right over here is about 25, 26, 27, and I will turn on the AC, but roughly 25. So if you are on the same environment, expect that you will be able to push the CPU for more than 20 minutes, but 20 minutes is enough to see that we can or can't get it and it didn't thermal throttle. The base clock is 800 megahertz and it was reaching on the 2.2 gigahertz being that on the old cores we can go to a maximum of 3000 megahertz or 3.0 gigahertz and on single core score we can theoretically go up to 3.8 gigahertz on single core score. So 2.2 gigahertz, I believe that it's a nice middle ground for this set right over here, which doesn't have any fan and it's completely silent. So perfect to be in an area that we don't want any noise at all, like a room, for example, or a part of the house that we have other people. Really great on the Z100 and on the Z300, the same great experience in terms of no noise at all while maintaining the maximum, close to maximum performance. Now, gaming experience. Now, this doesn't have any dedicated GPU. So if we want to play games, we will have to be limited to games like Asphalt Legends, uh, which I did play and it's nice and it's fluid and so a great experience. By the way, I was using a gamepad, which I will try to leave a link down below if I don't forget. It's one of the common questions that I get on my videos and I tend to forget. But the experience, really, really nice. I also played War Planet, which is a simple game. So this kind of games you will be able to play without any issues. If we want more, then we will need to use cloud gaming services, such as the Xbox Game Cloud, which I did use and I use on several devices. This is one of of the examples that with cloud gaming we will have a great experience. I did play with Forza Horizon 5 which is one of my favorite games and the experience was really nice because the connectivity that we have to the internet via Wi-Fi or Ethernet it's great so we just need that because the game will be rendered on this particular case Microsoft service. We just need a good internet connection and then a nice display gamepad and basically that is it. We can use any device. We don't even need this much power right over here. And talking about power. Can we edit videos on this mini computer? And my honest answer right away is no. This is not a machine that I would suggest if you do this kind of thing. It doesn't matter the value of the video, but I do almost daily videos. So if I had to rely on this machine to produce videos every day, it would struggle my work and it would slow down my workflow. But if you do produce videos for your holidays and if you take a few pictures and videos with your phones, family members and so on and so forth, and you want to have a little bit of fun, I don't see why you can't. Now, I did test out CapCut and DaVinci Resolve, which I've been doing with most of the machines that I touch here on the channel. Some of them really high performance, really expensive, and some of them cheaper and smaller, but with a great experience. Now, in terms of the CapCut, in terms of the editing, which is a important process, actually the most important in my opinion, the editing was okay. I will not say that it was the best. I will not say that it was the worst. It is okay, it's manageable. I can use a 4K timeline from a GoPro or from any phone, an iPhone, a Google Pixel, whatever we use, and I will be able to edit that feed without any issues. Now, I wouldn't advise going too crazy on the effects. 
just a plain timeline with some b-rolls a few effects a few transitions will be just fine in terms of rendering so that you have an idea the 4k six minute timeline that i had took five minutes and 30 seconds to render and one of the things that i did observe was that the cpu was about 80 percent of use so we had room to increase and the gpu was being used at 95 percent which is great cap cut and we have seen this across different devices with windows and mac os it's taking almost full advantage of the devices which is great and this is no exception now taking a look at the vinci resolve which is a lot heavier what i did see is that on the editing part is i would say more or less it's not as good as CapCut it's heavier so I do notice when I pick up my needle moving around uh, it will feel a bit sluggish so if you want to use the Vinci Resolve this is definitely not the machine that I would suggest but it's capable I was able to do a few cuts and so on and so forth I wouldn't apply many effects and I wouldn't apply any templates in terms of titles and motions forget about that because it will not be able to do so when we fill the timeline like this it simply means that it, it's not capable more than that and I did observe the CPU usage just by going back and forward 100% of usage so Da Vinci I would remove it out of the way but just out of curiosity while rendering the same 4k file 6 minutes it took 7 minutes and 50 seconds but observing the CPU uh, it was taxing out 100% of the CPU while only 40% of the GPU so this just means one plain thing on this type of machine we will notice a lot more than on more powerful machines like laptops that we have seen here that cost 2000 2500 euros if the CPU is only being used at 20% of the GPU at 30% we will not notice that much but here it was utilizing 100% of the CPU and only 40% of the GPU unlike CapCut which did a better job in terms of software optimization for this machine and that gave us two minutes in advance in terms of rendering which was really cool so can I edit videos and render on this machine yes use CapCut for that and you will be just fine so in conclusion would I suggest this machine as your main editing machine of course not I would suggest this machine for someone that is looking for a all-around mini computer completely silent that it can place on a bedroom that someone can use it for homework for presentations word powerpoint and so on all that kind of work it will do just fine i've got only one single display at this moment but i can connect another display so multitasking is no issue at all for this computer besides all this that we have seen to make it a server for your plex movies or mb or jellyfin or even for home assistant or all that sort of video that we have done right over here totally capable and for that those tests that we did on the thermal solution that it's here which is completely passive then you will be just fine to have this machine as a overall machine to have at home even just below your tv has your multimedia center which is another idea that being said hope that you enjoyed the video and if you did so don't forget the usual thumbs up right over there which is really appreciated on this side of the screen my name is Roberto George and as always I'll see you on the next one